Hi everyone, today I have a very serious question for you. Do you know how to be born again spiritually? How to be born again in Christ? If you don't, then you need to know because your salvation depends on it. Jesus says in John 3 verse 3, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So what does Jesus mean here when he says, unless you are born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God or you cannot see the kingdom of God? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. And this is so important. So please watch the video until the end so that you fully understand this. Let's get to it. Now just very quick, if it's the first time that you're here on our channel, I'm Daniel and welcome to DLM Christian Lifestyle, where we preach biblical truth in a balanced way. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do, so you won't miss any of our next videos. Now, what does Jesus mean here by saying, you need to be born again? The Bible basically tells us that you cannot be saved if you're not born again. And to understand this, you can't just read just one verse when Jesus explains it. You need to read the whole chapter here. So let's go back. John 3 verse 1. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is Spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Now here, born again literally means born from above, or in other words, born from God. In another verse, they use these exact words. 1 John 3 verse 9 says, No one born of God makes a practice of sinning, for God's seed abides in him. And he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. Being born again spiritually in Christ is regeneration. You can't do it yourself. This is a work of God. It is actually a miracle. It is God himself that gives you new spiritual life that transforms you, makes you a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Now you need to understand that this only happens when God reveals the truth to you of salvation, of Him, of the world, of you, everything. And when you accept it through real faith. 1 Peter 1 verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to His great mercy, He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith, for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. So you can't do this yourself. This is a work of God. He's the one that changes you. He opens your spiritual eyes and He gives you the Holy Spirit. But only if you repent of your sins and you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Acts 2 verse 38 says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. God might be talking to you right now through this video. And He wants you to repent of your sins, 
and accept Him as Lord and Savior of your life. It is a free gift that He gives you. But here's the thing, you need to accept it from your own free will. It's like this, when somebody wants to give you a gift and he says, here, you can have it. Is it just yours? No. It's not yours if you don't take it. First, you need to agree and then you need to accept it and then you take it, you receive it. And so it is the same with God asking you to let Him in. Revelation 3 verse 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. This is what the preachers of old meant by you have to ask Jesus into your heart. Unfortunately today people don't understand what this means anymore. And no, it's not just, hey, I just want my ticket into heaven and then go back to your sinful lifestyle. No, God changes you on the inside. You are a new creation. That is regeneration. That is what it means to be born again spiritually. You get spiritual life. This is what Ezekiel talked about. Ezekiel 36 verse 26 says, And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Why do we have a heart of stone in the first place? Why can't we just see the truth right at the beginning of our lives because of sin. When sin entered the world, it changed everything and it changed us humans. Genesis 1 verse 27 says, So God created man in his own image. Adam and Eve were created in God's image. Perfect. They had an open relationship with God. They walked with Him. They had no sin in their lives. But then when they sinned, it changed everything. Sin came into the world, into all human beings through Adam and Eve. Romans 5 verse 12 says, Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. So death spread to all human beings because of our sin. And it came from the originator of sin, Satan, who deceived Eve in the first place. And this death, is spiritual death. We are all human beings here. We breathe, we are alive for a certain period of time, but not all of us are spiritually alive. Only when you are reborn, only when God gives you His Spirit, the Holy Spirit, then you become spiritually alive. This is what regeneration means when you are born again. So this death is spiritual death. And as dead people, sinful people, we cannot have a relationship with God. Why? Because God is spirit and He is holy. Romans 3 verse 23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And Isaiah 59 verse 2 says, But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden His face from you, so that He does not hear. So how do we fix it? How do we fix this relationship between us and God? Well, you can't fix it. You can't fix it because you can't be fixed or you can't be restored as you are. You need to be reborn, made new. And only God can do it when He gives you the Holy Spirit, new spiritual life. John 6 verse 63 says, It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. You know, this is why so many people in the world are always unhappy. They have everything this world can offer them, but still they have this emptiness inside. If you are spiritually dead, you will always have this dead feeling, this emptiness, this hole inside of you. And you can try to fill it with a lot of things from this world, this temporary sinful world, and it will never be filled. Some people run after relationships, some after money, Others try traveling, eating, drinking, drugs, porn, or even power. But they will never be satisfied. Do you know why? Because what they really yearn for deep inside is new spiritual life. And only God can give it. And when they receive it, they receive eternal life and peace. Peace that surpasses all understanding. That's why Jesus said in John 4 verse 13, 
Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. And John 7 verse 37 says, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. You see, this is what it means to be born again, spiritually, in Christ. Regeneration. When God gives His Spirit to you, you receive it and you become a new creation. And only then can you truly have a relationship with God Almighty. Because God is Spirit. Jesus said in John 4 verse 23, But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship Him. God is spirit. And those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. So to be born again, you need to have real faith in Jesus Christ. You need to trust Him. You need to trust His Word because this is God's Word. And so if you trust Him, you trust His Word and you need to live by it. You need to repent of your sins and you need to follow Jesus Christ with all of what you are, your soul, your mind, your heart. Accept Him and trust in Him as your Lord and Savior. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 22 says, For as in Adam all die, so as also in Christ shall all be made alive. And Ephesians 2 verse 8 says, For by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. And when this happens, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that He died for your sins, He carried your sins, those evil things that you did, the punishment that you should have received from God, Jesus said, I'll take it on myself. And He died in your place. And when you accept it, God Almighty declares you as righteous because He justifies you. Romans 3 verse 21 to 25 says, But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by His blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness, because in His divine forbearance He had passed over former sins. It was to show His righteousness at the present time, so that He might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. And then, when this amazing transformation happens, when you are reborn, you also become God's child and He becomes your Father. John 1 verse 12 says, But to all who did receive Him, who believed in His name, He gave the right to become children of God. And then your life actually starts and you start your journey on the road of sanctification where you grow spiritually and the aim is to become more and more like Jesus. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 3 says, For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor not in the passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one transgress and wrong his brother in this matter, because the Lord is an avenger in all these things. As we told you beforehand and solemnly warned you, for God has not called us for impurity, but in holiness. You see, if you have been transformed, if you have been truly reborn through real faith, 
you are different. You think differently about things and you don't want to live in sin anymore. You now want to live for God and please Him. You see, you need to understand this. There's a huge difference between someone who's been spiritually reborn and someone who just goes to church out of tradition, but they are spiritually dead. That's not real faith. That's just dead religion. Let me read Jesus' words to you again. John 3 verse 3, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The church cannot save you. Your good deeds cannot save you. Only God can save you. He declares you as righteous the moment you have real faith in Jesus Christ. And you have real faith if you have been spiritually reborn. You need to know what real faith really means. Just believing that God exists is not real faith. The demons also believe it and they're not going to heaven. James 2 verse 19 says, You believe that God is one. You do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. You see, many people think that they are Christians, but in reality, they are not. They are spiritually dead. They have no real relationship with God. Because the way they live their life is just like the rest of mankind. They live in sin, in darkness. But you see, real Christians do not live in darkness anymore. We now live in the light for Jesus Christ. And we are the light of the world. Ephesians 2 says, And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. Do you understand what true faith in God really is? Do you know where you will go when you die? Heaven, hell. Are you ready to meet God? There are 150,000 people who die every single day. You might die in a few years. You might even die today. You don't know. And if you want to be sure of your salvation, then please watch one of these videos here and I'll see you there. And always remember this. God loves you, and I love you too. Bye. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee.